Hey guys, I'm very excited to start a new series today where I'm going to veganize some burgers from the Bob's Burgers Burger Book. I got this as a present a couple years ago, I think, for Christmas, and I love Bob's Burgers. It's all the recipes for all the joke burgers in the show, the burgers of the day that are on the like blackboard in the restaurant. So there's real recipes that go with all those burgers. This is half me proving that you can veganize anything, and then, you know, half some of these burgers honestly just sound super good, so I want to make my version of them. Now in addition to being vegan, I also have to make them gluten free because I'm allergic to gluten. So hopefully in this little series you're going to learn a lot of great swaps and tricks and tips. So the first one I'm doing is the final Kraut Down Burger. This is from Season 2, Episode 7, Moody Foodie. Sweet Bavarian sauerkraut, caramelized onion, Swiss cheese, and burger served on a Kaiser roll. Bavarian style is a much milder, sweeter style of sauerkraut, so quit fighting it. Give in, give in to Bavaria. I'm also going to make some fries to go along with this. I'll talk about that in a second, but let me show you my swaps. For the butter, I'm using standard old Earth Balance butter. This is a fairly common vegan butter. I've already got some onion chopped, and it's already cooking um, on the stove over here because caramelizing takes a pretty long time. And because I knew that I would have a lot of sauerkraut left over because I'm only making one burger, I wanted to at least get a kind I like. So this is my favorite sauerkraut, Cleveland kraut roasted garlic. For the meat today, I am using these Dr. Prager's All-American Veggie Burgers. These are, as far as I know, or at least have been able to find in like a Publix or somewhere like more widely accessible, Walmart, Target, something like that. They're the only like gluten-free frozen burgers that I can find because you know Morningstar has burgers and Gardein has burgers but they generally also have vital B gluten in them so these are gluten free you can also use like impossible meat I'm sure that would be really good but it is a little bit too expensive for me right now <laughs> for the cheese I'm going to use field roast chow in creamy original this is probably my favorite vegan cheese. I can kind of just eat this by itself. It's super good. Now, for the rolls, I went to Publix and I tried to get a brand called Be Free. They have these little buns, or these little rolls that you can cut in half and use as bun. That's what I wanted to do. But they only had their pita bread there. They didn't have their rolls, so I was unable to get that. But I recommend that brand. It's very allergy friendly. I know at Whole Foods, they've got tons of like random small businesses that have vegan and gluten-free you know, substitutions for everything. I made my own bread. I will link below the recipe I use. It's from Pinterest. I modified a couple things here and there, but it's honestly the best gluten-free bread I've ever had. It is so good. It reminds me of like the bread that they give you at Carabas to dip in the herbs and the oil. So good. So I made a loaf of that and I sliced it up and I'm going to probably put a little butter on one side and like toast it before I assemble a sandwich and honestly I think that might be better than using a roll. Regardless, it's going to be super good. As for the fries, I wanted to make like wedge style fries, like big chunks of potato today. So pro tip for making good crispy and not super time consuming oven fries is you pierce the potato and microwave it for a couple minutes first. When it cools down, then you cut it up. Coat in oil, seasonings, whatever you want to use. And then when you put it on the pan, you want the pan to already be hot. So as you're preheating the oven, just put the pan in there and it'll get hot with the oven. And that way the underside will be nice and crispy. And it shouldn't take like an hour. It should be closer to like half an hour or even 20 minutes depending on how long you microwave it for. When the potato's already cooked, all it's in the oven for is to get nice and crispy. All right, welcome to my stove top. Here are the potatoes, microwaved, cooled, cut up. I'm gonna add a smidge of olive oil, sort of lightly tossed to combine. Salt, pepper. Then I'm actually just gonna add a smidge of Italian seasoning. And to toss that all in. Now, like I said, the pan is already in the oven, so I'm gonna take that out. I'm just gonna shake the fries on push them apart a little, and then pop them back in the oven. It's at 400, by the way. I know it says 395, but I typed in 400, and honestly, that's close enough. And I'm gonna check on those in about 10 minutes. All right, so here are my little onions. They're getting there, getting nice and dark. Again, they've just been over a low, low, medium heat for probably about 15 minutes now. I feel like I should say that this is definitely not gonna be the most healthy series. 
but it will be fun and it will be tasty. Here's the bread. The pieces are pretty small because my bread pan really is not very big and I make about three quarters of the recipe that I'm going to link below. So if you were to make the full recipe in a bigger loaf pan, the pieces of course would be bigger than this. That is decently dark now, so I'm going to add in the sauerkraut. I'm just going to go in with a decent sized scoop. I'm going to lower the heat again just a smidge. And as for the cooking directions on this burger, it says cook about three minutes per side over medium heat. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it started over here. Probably leave it on for like five minutes because it's at a low heat. And then once I get those out, I'll crank it back up again. In the meantime, I can be buttering this bread. Buttering both sides. Not super heavy, just enough to cover it. Set it back to medium heat for the burger and I'm gonna scoop these onions out. I'm just going to put this little jarlet on top of it to keep it warm. Scooch the patty to the center. Fries out. Flip them over. Pop them back in. Alright, time to flip. I don't know why I'm using this spatula. I literally bought a real nice metal spatula for this series and I'm not using it. Here we go, geez. I'm also going to be weird and kind of cut the edges of this so that it fits the little piece of bread better. Don't worry, they'll still get eaten. Alright, so this is good to flip again. Flip these two also, why not? I'm going to pop the cheese on. I just cut it in half and I'm stacking it. Then little thing my dad taught me when he uh, was cooking a restaurant is to melt the cheese, you drop it in an ice cube and cover it. And of course it's not going to melt exactly like cheese, but it is like nice and soft and warm now, which is what we're going for. Alright, going to scoop this dude over. And then right in the same pan, I'm going to start toasting the bread. Alright, so the pieces of bread are lightly toasted, and I'm just going to assemble it the way the book says. I got a clean plate here, and it's going to be bottom bun, so I'll take the one that's slightly thinner. Cheeseburger, and some sauerkraut. Dijon. And our top bun. looking ones. And here it is. There it is. I'm super excited about it. It smells so good. I'm going to cut it in half. Dude, look at it. All right, and I got to taste test it, right? I feel like you don't need me to tell you that bread and caramelized onions and mustard and fake meat taste good, but this is really good. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you make this. If you have this book, let me know which one you want me to make next. I already have planned out that I'm going to make four, and if people really enjoy these, then I'll keep going. But yeah, other than that, thank you so much for watching. Please leave like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.